All right, good evening, everyone. This is Dr. Bill with World Bible School, and welcome to Kingdom Dynamics. It's been about uh, six uh, or seven weeks since we've been on the air, and uh, we have relocated to Joplin, Missouri. If you heard my pre-broadcast video, we are here. Uh, we are uh, have a lot of arranging, a lot of unpacking, uh, a lot of things to just to see where God's placing us and fitting us into the scheme of things in this particular part of Missouri. And uh, someone asked me, why didn't you move to another state other than Missouri? Well, that's because our corporation of our ministry is uh, in uh, Missouri, and it's just a lot less headache just to get some addresses changed and updated. So uh, that's where we are. Thank you so much. Uh, it's good to see Pastor Wayne Powell, who will be on the show in a few weeks. Uh, uh, Apostle Emil Alston uh, from South Africa. Uh, there's my wife, Faye, uh, Colin Overby, and just others who will be seeing this video live. Some of you will see this video after the fact, and uh, some of you will see it months down the road, maybe years down the road. But I want to say to you today that this is just a few days before Father's Day. So happy Father's Day to all of our dads out there. And uh, some of you may not have natural children, like my spiritual father who passed away a few months ago, didn't have natural children, but he was a spiritual father to many. So that might fit you. So happy Father's Day to you. Well, tonight we have a wonderful show planned for you. My guest tonight is Pastor Kyle Butler, and he began pastoring New Beginnings Ministry located in Patterson, New Jersey in 1996. In 2008, during a time of frustration and burnout, man, I identify with that. He became awakened to our Father's unconditional love and unlimited grace. Pastor Kyle then realized how religious minded he had become. I don't know if you've ever been there before, folks, but that kind of fits a lot of us. And uh, how destructive that mindset was. From that time on, his heart, passion, and goal has been to help as many people as possible become consciously aware of the truth about the Father's unconditional and unlimited grace. You can find out more about him by going to Kyle Butler on Facebook. And uh, I don't know if he has a website, but uh, if he does, he can tell you about that. Uh, Pastor, welcome to Kingdom Dynamics. Please greet our audience tonight and just tell us a little bit about what's going on in your life and ministry. Thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor and a privilege to be here. You know, it's amazing how God connects people together. We, we haven't known each other very long, but it doesn't take very long to know uh, where someone's heart is. I mean, you kind of get that right away. Yeah. So uh, I'm just so honored to be here and, and to, to, to be part of this and what you're doing and what how God is moving on this part with you down there. And, but um, I'm just so excited because there, there's 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 a there's a, 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 a an excitement a joy a, an exuberance that I have now on a daily basis and it's it's simply because of the truth that I've come to understand how unconditionally loved I am by our father and uh, you know I, I often tell people that there there was a day that I wake up with with great worry and great dread and great uh, you know, confusion about the day and, and especially if there were pending matters, you know, those pending matters that were so overwhelming to our minds. Yes. I'd wake up and it would really dominate my day. Uh, things with the church, things with my personal life, things with family, they just dominate my day. And I'd, I'd pass, I tried to pass them over to the Lord and say, God, you know, you, you take care of this. Right. You did say cast all of your cares upon us. Yeah. But because I, I wasn't connected with the truth of his unconditional love, well, I tell you what, I just didn't believe that he was really going to take care of it. So, you know, I kind of took a lot of those things back. But now, because I'm I, I'm so aware, I've become consciously aware of his unconditional love for me. I tell you what, casting those cares upon him and leaving them there, it's so much easier now. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you, you nodded that you had a website. Tell the folks how they can uh, reach you. KyleLButler.com. KyleLButler.com will get you to my website. There's some content out there, some teaching out there, and uh, we're uploading stuff all the time. It's, it's fairly new. We've got a, just a little bit of stuff out there, but there's that's a definitely a way to contact me. It's a contact page. There's a donate button there. There's there's some teachings out there. KyleLButler.com. All right. Praise the Lord. Now, tonight we are talking about something that is 
so in tune with who God really is, but at the same time, it's so strange for many people because most of us grew up in some sort of a religious society. Even if you were in a denomination like I was, where we thought we were the only ones that was right and eventually everybody else was gonna get it and we really didn't get it, we were wrong. But I, I just wanna make this opening statement uh, and then I've got a question to, to shoot at Pastor Kyle. And uh, we want you to post your comments and your thoughts in the, um, uh, the, the chat room. And uh, we wanna be able to watch and see everybody that's here. We just appreciate you so very much. But here's the thing, knowing the unconditional love of God is one of the most powerful of all biblical truths today. I mean, it really is. If you're ever gonna know anything, I always tell people when they say, do I start in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Do I start in, in Genesis? Do I start in Revelation? Start by looking up scriptures on how much God really loves you. That's the place for every new convert, every old convert, and anybody else that's looking for an answer from God. And so even though that's true, uh, it can be one of the most difficult truths for people to even attempt to embrace. Now, the reality is that when a person has a mindset and mindsets is something I teach on a lot because people have we have a lot of wrong mindsets that need to be corrected and they can't be corrected by uh, what we used to call being whipped from the pulpit. OK, that that'll never yeah. correct it. That'll just no. uh, uh, cause that mindset to become deep, uh, deeply ingrained in you. But they have a mindset of being unloved or not having the ability to love others. And this is a belief system of, of, of one who does not truly understand being loved unconditionally or without restraint by their heavenly father. Can you imagine being loved by someone without restraint? I mean, someone that accepts you for who you are, even though you're not changed into who they would, they have destined you to be, still they love you right where you're at, and uh, so, Pastor Kyle, here's the thing. If a person does not understand Father God's love, is it possible for anyone to have difficulty knowing how to give love and or how to receive love from anyone else? Well, absolutely. Um, you know, I grew up in, a, in an environment with my father who really... Uh, I questioned for years, did he really love me? You know, I, my mom, I knew it, it was, it was undeniable. It was without question. We, we knew mom loved us, but dad, well, uh, that's a different story. And, and I wasn't really sure about his love. And because I, I wasn't sure about his love, it was very difficult for me to give him love back. It was, it was very difficult. You know, I, I wanted to match his you know, his lack of love for me with a lack of love back towards him. And that's really how our relationship was for many years. It was a, well, you hurt me all these years. Now I'm going to try to hurt you back as much as I can, whenever mm -hmm. I can. If, and if I can do that by not speaking to you or ignoring you or not showing you any attention, like I would show my mom as I got older and I knew that bothered you, then I would do that. So if, if, if we don't know that we're really loved, Mm -hmm. that way. If we don't know that we're loved unconditionally by the Father, it's going to be really tough to, to really give and display that kind of love on others. And really, it, it's going to be tough to receive that kind of love uh, from mm -hmm. others as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, a lot of times what, uh, what some of us experienced was giving hardness for the hardness we were giving. So Absolutely. dad was hard then we were hard back because we didn't know how to relate to that. Not understanding right. that dad might have come from a difficult situation in his childhood and and yeah. so on and so forth. Uh, you know, I'm not a person that really embraces generational curses. I know that that uh, uh, they have the DNA factor. You know, my parents told me for years that uh, uncle so and so great uncle so and so had uh, died of Huntington's disease. And I was told that because of the generational thing, I would die of Huntington's disease and I would always respond to my parents and tell them not me when I got born again I had a blood transfusion I got the blood of Jesus in me and no disease Amen. across Amen. that line but then the truth is also that when we talk about generational curses that go on in family history for thousands and thousands of years you know Jesus without was without a biological father all generational curses stopped in him so we're not under a curse we're under a blessing amen and so 
you you had mentioned in our conversations Ephesians 2, and I'd like to read Ephesians 2, verse 4 and 5, and I know you've got a lot of things to say about this. I'm using the New King James, so if you've got another translation, feel free to throw it in uh, afterwards. But it says, but God, who is, not was, but is, rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead, dead to him in trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. And then he says in parentheses, by grace, you have been saved. What do you think yeah. about that? Well, I tell you what, this has been something, this, this verse, those two verses has been something that I've been talking about a lot lately. And it's just really revolutionized my mind, even more than it was when these verses came alive. Mm -hmm. You know, growing up, and you can relate to this, I'm sure, growing up in a performance-based uh, uh, atmosphere. We grew up in a, in a Pentecostal holiness church, and trust me, uh, that we meant every word of that holiness part. Well, you know, <laughs> holiness was what we're after, and we were after it every week. And every week we we're going to yes. tell you, or you were going to be told how, uh, what you needed to do to be holy and strive and strive and strive. So I grew up in that environment, very conditioned, very regimented. Uh, very rule laden, and that's just the way that I I I, I identify with God, and I thought God identified with me. So if things were going really well, then okay, I, I must be doing okay. If things got rocky and started being you know really shaky, then I, you know it's time to get to the prayer closet. It's time to fast. It's time to get a hold of God. It's time to repent. It's time to moan and groan and all that kind of stuff. So um, when 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 this verse hit me. And it, you know how they say it fell on me like a ton of bricks. Well, when it hit me, what really stood out to me was because of his great love mm -hmm. in which he has loved us. Mm -hmm. And it, it occurred to me, it came a revelation to me that absolutely every single thing the father has ever done concerning mankind, every single thing started at that place from that foundation. And that's where we should have started. We mm -hmm. should have came into this with the understanding that absolutely everything had been finished. Everything had been provided. Everything had been done. We were already blessed. We were already healed. We were already redeemed. And it was simply because of his great love in which he loved us. And there was nothing that we had to do to, to, to measure up to it. To, to work ourselves into that place or that position, we came in that way. Problem is, we didn't know it. <laughs> no one well, told us that. And the truth is, you can't measure up to his love or who he is. And, and the reality is, right. is that we based the Father's acceptance on our performance. But what right. New Covenant believers need to understand that uh, the acceptance of, of the father toward us, of his great love, because of his great love, which he has loved us, or that's what he loved us with, his great love, was established multiple years ago, hundreds and thousands of years ago, not just in Jesus Christ. That was the ratification of, of God's heart toward us. But, you know, we came yeah. out of God. The Bible is very clear on this. We came out of God oh, yeah. as spirit beings. Oh, yeah. We were made like him before time began. And at some point he inserted us into a human fetus and we have a soul. And all of that came into this world with a a view of what our present surroundings were. Then we were birthed, and that was while we were still in the fetus. Then we were birthed into this world, and our, our, our immature mindset, our immature view of who we were began to expand, but it was still immature. You know, one day down the road, and I've been uh, in, involved in church ministry. Uh, I'm 63 years old, and I have been involved in church ministry just about all of those years. My dad was a pastor. This is all I've ever known. But there was a day where I come to say, you know what? I'm preaching it. Um, it's not making a change in someone's life. I'm not getting it. Uh, if you know truth, truth will make you free. And this is not making people free. So got to go back to the drawing board and say, OK, Father, what is the deal? And what we learned was, is that it was the performance of Jesus that placed us in yes. right standing with the Father. And that's when his great love really was the love that we felt we experienced. And, and even with that, Pastor, we didn't still didn't get it. 
today. Yeah. We're getting it, but we still don't get it. There's so <laughs> much that God has for us. And, you know, as you minister tonight, and I, and I, I want you to have your freedom tonight, but I want to tell you there are people that are going to be watching us, uh, whether you're live right now with us or you're going to be joining us, who literally have had uh, uh, hindered uh, a hindered perspective of the father's love because of the relationship you did or did not have with your dad, or maybe you as a son or a daughter just don't know how to relate to your parent. And so it's really not a Father's Day broadcast, but I thought it was so unique that God put it on my heart to, to do Kingdom Dynamics after our move, and it's just a few days before Father's Day. So as you speak tonight, I know the Holy Spirit is, has dealt with me this afternoon, that there are some people that's going to be healed, and just as Jesus opened the, un, their understanding when he spoke, there's some people tonight whose understanding is going to be opened and enlightened to how much Father God loves them, and that's how they are able to accept their imperfect parent or their imperfect child or an imperfect relationship with someone because it's not based on a person's imperfection, but it's based on a perfect God that lives on the inside of us who has perfected us Amen. forever in Christ. Amen. 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 I love that. Amen. That is, yes, yes. You know, when you, you just said the, you just mentioned the word enlightened. Now, to, to really to really get how important this is, we, we really got to go back to chapter one, okay. uh, Ephesians chapter one. And if we look down in verse number 15, Paul is here and he's, he's about to do something that is intentional. This, this is intentional. And, and, you know, you can say, well, didn't he do everything intentionally? I'm sure he did. But, but this was really, really intentional. OK. Mm -hmm. Here he is, and this is at the latter part of his life. Ephesians was written, he was in prison. This was towards the latter part of his life. He had experienced many things. He had grown in revelations. He said, listen, what I know, and you know, there, there was some talk about him versus the other apostles and how they walked with Jesus and he didn't and all this stuff. And he mm -hmm. said, well, yeah, you know, that's fine. I, I know you guys they had dinner with him and you know, one boats with him and all oh, that's cool. But I want you to know, I'm not, I'm not any less than any of you because what I've received, no man has taught me. Jesus has come and he has mm -hmm. taught me himself. He has given me this revelation. So he put that out there to let them know, listen, I'm not I'm not beneath you guys here. I, you know, I've got a revelation here and it didn't come from man, which is important. So with that in mind, Paul is now he's at the latter end of his life. He's, he's you know, he's about to conclude this whole thing. So he's writing here to the church in Ephesus and he's in jail. But he's hearing about many people who are saying that 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 are hearing the gospel and they're saying, hey, Count me in. I, I want that. You know, yes, mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm, I'm on board. I agree. Yes, that's who I am. Mm -hmm. So they're, 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 Paul is hearing these reports are coming back to him and he's he's a, he's a late, he's elated. He's excited. He's just full of joy. And he starts to think. He starts to think I, I, I've got to tell them something. I've got to give a message. I've got to I've got to I want to help them. I'm not there with them in person. So. What I'm going to say, what I'm going to write to them, this is intentional. And he starts off here in verse number 15, and he says, After I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks of you for the thanks of you mentioning you in my prayers. Now, when I was coming up in the Pentecostal holiness denomination. See, that's where we would have focused on. Paul, he didn't cease praying. He prayed and he prayed and he prayed and he prayed and he prayed. That's where we would have parked at. We would have parked there because performance-based mindsets and performance-based lifestyles, you see that and you think, oh, yes, yeah, see, Paul, he, he didn't stop praying. And so that was the key to his power. That was the key to his success and all those kind of things. But that really wasn't what he was saying. And that wasn't the meat of the matter at all. Mm -hmm. He says, I, I haven't stopped giving thanks to you in my prayers. Now, notice thanks is what he was doing. He was thanking the Father, not pleading over them and <laughs> begging them to change. He was giving thanks to the Father. And that's important to see. Exactly. So he says here, now, why? That the Lord Jesus, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of him that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know 
what is the hope of his calling, what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us according to the working of his mighty power. And so this prayer is intentional because Paul now having once been Saul, uh, the Pharisee of Pharisees, he was the scholar of all scholars. He had been knee deep, neck deep, over his head in water, in a performance-based living. He, he performed, he strived to do everything based upon the law, everything yeah. based upon the rules and the regulations. I mean, he mastered this to the best of his ability. So he knew something about what he was about to say. He knew something. And he says, I'm making this prayer for you. Not that you learn how to perform. Mm-hmm. Not that you learn how to, to pray, not that you learn how to get a hold of the altar, not that you learn how to be good servants. Not No, no, that's not what I'm going to do here. What I'm mm-hmm. going to do, which is so intentional, I want your eyes of your understanding to be enlightened. So Amen. that's where he's, this is where he's at here. This is why he's doing this. And then what, I, you know, then chapter two, what we just heard in your hearing, the reading, chapter two, verse four I think that's the, the the next big part of this whole thing here. I think he was saying, I need your the eyes of your understanding to be enlightened, that you may know who you are, that you may know what's inside of you, that you will know what's been given, that you will know what the Father has already done. And before you get carried away, be, before you get lost in a performance-based mentality or mindset like I had, I want you to know that it has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with the Father's great love in which he has loved us. Amen. This was intentional. This was purposeful. Paul did this intentionally. And it's, it's pretty amazing to me, you know, that we miss this. We mm-hmm. missed this. Like I said earlier, we would have focused on Paul not ceasing to pray that he, he the, to us, that would have been the meat of it all. And what we would have done is we would have heard this message on a Sunday morning. And those of us that were e- eager, beager, eager, eager beavers and, and just really aggressive and trying to get more power and trying to get more anointing, we would have said, well, I want, I'm going to do like Paul. I'm going to just pray as much as I can so that I can get this revelation of God's power working in us. You know, yes. I can't tell you how many times before a prayer, uh, before I had to preach or teach, I was taught, you got to get prayed up. <laughs> you know, you pray oh, yeah. up, whatever, whatever that is, you know, you got to get prayed up. I never, I never knew what that meant really, but I, I was taught that. So I would go into my prayer room, into my closet or whatever it's called. And I'd get for the Lord and lay there for days prior to. And I remember I would say, Oh God, I want your power. Now in my mind, what I was really saying was God, when I, when I, when I simply walk in the church, mm-hmm. I want people just to fall out in the glory. <laughs> 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 yeah. That's what I want. I want as, as soon as I open that door and walk in, I I just want people to fall out in the glory, you know. And 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 that's what I was really p- praying for and towards that that this power, this dominance would come flowing out of me as soon as I walked in or as soon as I opened up my mouth, because I was trained and conditioned to believe that those types of displays, which I'm now na- I now know to be more emotional than anything else, were demonstrations of God's power. It was demonstration mm-hmm. of God's, of you know, of our anointing and how powerful we were. Well, <laughs> listen, I can tell you how wrong I was. I can't tell you how wrong we were in that mindset. That had really nothing to do with anything because let me, let me just key you in on this. Yes. I no longer seek for that. And I tell you, it, it wouldn't it doesn't matter to me while I'm teaching. If anyone says amen, it doesn't matter to me if, if someone says, hey, will you pray for me if they fall down? I, I can care less about any of that. What mm-hmm. I what I do, what, what I'm concerned about 
It's, hey, I want you to understand and see and, uh, and come to revelation of the great love that the Father has for you. If you and I can have an encounter and a teaching moment and you can walk away with a, with a shifted mindset or a new mindset about mm -hmm. the Father's love, then, hey, that's what it's all about. And that's yeah. what Paul was doing here. This was intentional. He could have told them, hey, listen, get serious with God. Work right. towards what you need, you know, uh, perform towards what you need. And, and, and but he didn't do that because he had come to understand that none of that really mattered. And the only thing that mattered is what was in the father's heart for us from the very beginning. What the what was what was the father's motive? What pushed his motive? What 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 activated his work? What what, you know, was the foundation of everything he did? was because of his great love in which he has loved us. I like to call it the correct foundation. So I have a teaching that I'll have on, it's on YouTube now and it's gonna go to the website soon, but it's called Starting on the Correct Foundation because we started, as I mentioned earlier, on a foundation of works and performance mm -hmm. and doing. And, and as my, my good brother Roy Richmond says, do to be, we were trying to do to be what we already were. Mm -hmm. and Paul says, no, 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 no. You don't start there. <laughs> Matter no. of fact, you don't go there at all. You don't, where you start is at this place that you will know that absolutely everything is because of his great love in which he has loved us. Yeah, our works were on the foundation of wood, hay, and stubble, and those things were judged and burned, and, and it was all done at the cross. <laughs> and, uh, you, you know, and one of the things about our perspective, um, that we have had is that not only did it hinder us, but we Im, uh, we uh, imputed that perspective on other people also. We sure did. And yeah. so, you know, like it or not, it came out as judgment. It came out as condemnation. Now, they weren't condemned in Christ, but we condemned them. And we thought because they weren't living the way we saw it. Uh, and we right. can look at their lives and say, you're not living the way I see it. And so therefore you cannot possibly be living it the way God sees it. The reality is, as you said it all, when you said because of his great love, uh, which he has loved us, the, the love of God was established long before you and I had a consciousness into this natural world, before we had a consciousness of right and wrong, or and that right and wrong became really a, a ta having a taste of the tree of the, of the knowledge of good and evil, uh, a type for me, a type of the arm of the flesh to do good or to do to to do right, uh, to do wrong. Uh, I love these verses in the Message Bible. Uh, uh, Ephesians 2 verse 4 and 5 not to veer from chapter 1 but it says instead immense uh, um, Im immense in mercy and with an incredible love he embraced us he took mm -hmm. our sin dead lives and made us alive in Christ he did all this on his own with no help <laughs> from us I mean think about it God made a decision yeah. to love all humanity and he didn't ask yeah. our permission about it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's true. Verse number five really, you know, seals the deal on the whole performance thing. We were dead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we, we were. And, and I, I always say when I'm teaching on this, what could a dead person do? Nothing. Right. I mean, there's no input at all. There's nothing that we did here on this in this matter. This was something that God, the Father, the Spirit, they got together. They agreed upon for us, towards us, in us. They mm -hmm. agreed upon this. We had nothing to do with this at all. So, you know, because there, there will be people, I, I assume, that will hear this and will say, that can't be true. Mm -hmm. that, that can't be true. I've heard all my life of everything I've got to do to please God. I've heard all my life everything I've got to do to get more anointing. I've heard all my life everything I've got to do to be holy and clean myself up. I mean, my gosh, I've been rolling up my sleeves for the last 15 years trying to do this thing, yeah, right? Got it. You know? Yeah. And so people will hear that and think that, you know, you guys are you guys are leading people astray. You're 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 giving that that greasy grace stuff, that that you know, that 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 too easy and and, and, and stuff like that. Well, you read it for yourself. Verse exactly. five tells you, right? You, you were dead. 
you 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 were dead. What did you do? You know, what you what you what you've been taught to do is once you became alive, now get to work, get busy, get busy, get busy. That's what you were taught. Mm -hmm. Well, we're trying to tell you tonight that before you became alive and were told to get busy, the thing you're striving for, looking for, trying to get within your own ability has already been given by the Father. And it's simply because of his great love in which he has loved us. You know, I wanted my dad was really big on on illustrated sermons. You remember those days? I I, I never could pull one off, but I thought about one. <laughs> I, I wanted to bring uh, actually bring a coffin into the front of the auditorium and put a mirror in the bottom so that when people lean over the coffin, they would see themselves. And the title of my sermon was "Dead Men Feel No Pain." So the reality mm. is, that there's there's offense, there's hurt, there's there's a, do I love or not love? Do I, how do I judge? Do, when, when do I condemn? When do I not condemn? The reality is if you're dead in Christ, you don't feel none of that. You don't consider any of that. And I, I love as uh, Ephesians 2 goes on to verse 6 and 7, he says, and has raised it because he said we're dead. And now he says, and has raised us up together. That's talking about with Christ and made us sit yes. together with Christ in the heavenly places in Christ, or they could simply read uh, to set together in the heavenly Christ. And in yep. the ages to come, now this seems to be the period of transition from the cross to the destruction of the temple in AD 70, or we could say the end of the religious system in that day. By the way, it's still dead today, folks. Uh, it, you can choose to, you can choose to, to uh, we have all kinds of of posting that says, do not drink this product. It's poisoned. It will kill you. You can still choose to <laughs> yeah. do that, but there is a word that says, don't go that way. That he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Jesus Christ. God trying to show you yeah. something. There, there's a movie uh, and they sing a song and, and says that God's trying to show you something. God's trying to show you something. What he's trying to show you is that you're trying to be righteous by your performance. And the truth is God made you righteous in Christ Jesus long before you had the opportunity to perform. Uh, I love yeah. Ephesians yeah. 1 verse, uh, Ephesians 1 verse 4, when he said, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, yeah. that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. You are holy, not because you did good today or you did bad right. today. You're holy because that's how he chose for you to be. And notice how he did it before him in love. You are without blame. No accusation that comes to you or against you by anyone really matters. The only thing that activates that accusation is how you react to it. So stop reacting to it. Just react to the Father's love. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You know, you mentioned something earlier, <clears throat> We and we both use the word mindsets. I've kind of picked it up since I heard you say it. Mm -hmm. And what I, the, 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 to me, uh, if I was doing an illustrated sermon about mindsets, uh, I, I, I do home improvements and, and I've, I've been in construction some, so mm -hmm. I, I know a little bit about this. Concrete is probably the toughest uh, substance to break up. You know, when, when I first when I first started working in home improvements, uh, we we were we were repairing a patch of a side a sidewalk, and mm -hmm. and, and my my, my my attempts to think that I had the ability to do this, I took a natural hammer and was hitting the sidewalk trying to, you know, help them break it up. And they looked at me like, you're not going to get anything done with that little thing. Do you realize how thick that concrete is? And then they were right. You know, you just, you just whack away and then burn out all your energy. But, mm -hmm. you know, you, then you can, you can go get a sledgehammer if you like. And, but mm -hmm. it's going to take tremendous energy and effort to, you know, again and again and again to get it just to crack. That's what most right. people do, they take a jackhammer, this powerful uh, bit of equipment that has tremendous pressure and tremendous force and just, and even with that, it takes some time to get that concrete broken up. That's how I see mindsets. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's set. It's, it's, it's in place. And, you know, it, it, you, it, it's, it's going to take something to, to break that up. And this is where the truth comes in. This is what the truth does. The truth comes in. It's that mighty jackhammer. It's that, that yeah. force that just comes in, tears that mindset up, and replaces it with the truth. Now, why 
are we saying this? Because you and I, to get here, okay, I, 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 I've, I've been in church all my life. You know, I, I did that walk to the altar at 13. <laughs> you know, I was in ministry very early on, pastoring very early on at the, the, the young age of 26. I knew on, on, I knew the words on the page for God so loved the world. Oh, you know that, you know, you, you, you've got to know that you've been in church all your life, I don't know but that. it didn't mean anything. It didn't mean anything to me. It, it, it wasn't intimate to me. It didn't mean anything to me because what I was hearing, a mindset was, was being formed based upon what I was hearing. God is hard. God is mean. God is requiring. Mm-hmm. If you don't get right, God will make you get right. And all oh, these yeah. kind of things. So that was the mindset that I had. And as the truth began to invade that mindset, I would wrestle with it and say, that can't be true. That that mm-hmm. can't be. Or it can't be that easy. Or I really can't be what he, sa- what he says I am or who he says I am. And I would just spend time listening to, to the truth over and over and over again. I, I would just, you know, because I, I was intrigued. And I would hear the father speak to me and tell me something. And he would connect me with people that would be saying this truth. And I couldn't see it. I remember uh, the the first time I heard Dr. K. Fairchild teach. Mm -hmm. She was, uh, I used to watch uh, most Sunday mornings, um, Don Kinkley's channel on Sunday mornings before I I got out and, and, and got myself to where I was going. And so she was on there one morning. And I tell you what, most stuff she was saying was like, they were just <laughs> sure. in there. <laughs> it was right over my head. I'm like, but I was intrigued. I mean, it sounded really good. As a matter of fact, in the, in the same vein, um, uh, W.H., um, the, the author of the, the, the Shack, I can't think of his full name right now. Um, he was there one day and I didn't even know about the Shack. I didn't even know he, he had written this book. But he was, he was, he was, he, he had picked up uh, the, the, the text there, I, I believe in Isaiah 53, where it talks about he was bruised for our iniquity, the chastisement of our peace upon him, and by his were healed. And he was teaching from an element and, and from a place like, that wasn't the father who did that. And I'm like, what? <laughs> but it was intriguing. And so I, what I'm saying that to say, you, you got to spend some time. You got to get away from what you've been hearing. You got to get away from that. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I really appreciate what the father has done through social media, because there are many of you who for all of your life, for probably a good portion of your Christian walk so far, you've only listened probably to one voice. Yeah, maybe occasionally you'll turn on TBN or maybe occasionally you'll get a book, but you hear mm-hmm. one voice on Sundays. It's that same old voice. Well, thank God there's so many voices now that are out here. Let the Father, like Paul was saying, let the Father direct you to some other voices that have only one agenda. Mm-hmm. And that is to show you how loved you are, mm-hmm. how valuable you are, how special you are, what the Father has already done for you. His desire for you and I is to come into the perfect rest that he's already prepared for us to be in, which is where we should be. as. Uh, Paul just said, we just read here and that we're seated with him. We're in that perfect place of rest. That's where we are. That's where we've always been. We just didn't know it. That's right. And I would say tonight, you know, to all of our viewers, we we have many ministers that have been watching us tonight. And, uh, you know, you may uh, be Pentecostal. You may be Baptist. You may be Catholic. I have tons of Catholic priests that follow me on one of my timelines. Uh, you may be some denominational person and 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 feel like that Pastor Kyle and I are really bashing where you're at. We're not bashing where you're at. We're simply telling you we've been to some places and God has shown us really what when you talk about love or you talk about righteousness, or you're talking about being holy. Really, what we're saying to you is, you know, God's just revealing his true self. And so if you're a person that's very judgmental and you're saying that the wrath of God is still in force today and you really have that mindset, here's what I would say to you. You're probably spending all of your time in the old covenant and that's all yeah. you see. You can really tell a person that studies the law or lives in that and doesn't view that uh, in the light of the new covenant. Uh, and so I am so appreciative 
of the Apostle Paul, who, yeah, he wasn't the guy that walked with Jesus and was at the Last Supper and and uh, that Jesus washed their feet and all those things and got to embrace Jesus like John did. But, you know, here's a guy who on the road to Damascus had a heavenly encounter, a heaven on earth encounter, yep. caught up into a realm. And the thing, when we say that being caught up into a realm, like set your affection on things above, uh, above doesn't mean up yonder, above means right. a higher plane of thought. And yes. so here's Paul has this encounter with Jesus, not with uh, some religious council, not with a denomination, but with Jesus. And Jesus shares things that propels the apostle Paul, who was Saul and now is Paul, and propels him to a place of understanding that he had no clue he was going to come into that realm. I mean, God, God accelerated him into the place that here was a guy who come from the opposite end of the coin, the guy, a guy who probably people were not going to receive very well, especially the Romans uh, and, and his own people, the Jews, because, hey, not only did he abandon the Romans and their philosophies, but he abandoned the Jews and their theologies. And now he's preaching yeah. Jesus Christ and him crucified. And the other disciples are thinking, um, where'd this guy come from? All we know is we <laughs> yeah. run from this guy because he's the guy that persecuted Christians. He dragged people out of their houses and homes and 